Hey everybody, welcome to the Blue Color Beer Gourmet's channel. I'm Chris, I'm the Blue Color Beer Gourmet. I like craft beer, I like to drink it, I like to review it, I don't like to pay a whole lot of money to do so. So on this channel I like to review beers that usually come in around the $2 price range. And today's selection is no exception to that rule. In fact, I paid buck seventy-nine for a 12 ounce bottle. Uh, this is the third in a four part series of me examining the beers from Omission Brewing. Omission Brewing hasn't been available in Las Vegas for a very long time, and I noticed that they are gluten-free, and because I have a friend with uh, celiac disease who has really bad reactions to gluten, I'm always on the lookout for uh, <clears throat> for uh, uh, gluten-free and gluten-removed beers. This is, in particular, is a gluten-removed beer. That's what Omission makes. Um, also, I'm going to start trying to look into some of the non-alcoholic beers. Because I think that beer is something that everybody should be able to drink, regardless of your uh, religious or uh, or or physical conditions. I, I think we should all. I think we should be able to pour a non-alcoholic beer for a friend who doesn't drink and say, "Here, enjoy," and it should be a good one. They shouldn't have to drink garbage. So anyway, stepping down from the soapbox, today's selection is the Omission Brewing Company's Pale Ale, and as I said, I paid a buck seventy-nine for this. 12 ounce bottle. This particular bottle is six months old. Yes. No. No, I'm sorry. Four months old. <laughs> I need to do a better job with my math. Uh, it has a 5.8 ABV. Typically, American pale ales come in between 4.5 and 6.2, so it's well within range. Um, normally, American pale ales have between 30 and 50 IBUs. This one has 33, so putting a little at the lower end of the bitterness scale for American pale ales. <laughs> Looking through the review sites, I found that 29 of my friends have given this a cumulative score of 3.23. 63,000 of us have given a cumulative score of 3.25. Beer Advocate had 628 scores, giving it a score of 3.33, which on their rankings is okay. Uh, the hops used in this beer are Millennium, Cascade, and the malts that were used were Two Row Pale, and Carmel, and Munich malts. Uh, one of the things I like about this beer in particular is that not only do we have a brewed on date, which I, I'm very appreciative of, but we've also got, where is it? Huh, okay, that's kind of funny. This one doesn't have the uh, the nutrition information like the IPA did. Uh, if you've watched the other previous reviews, I've also done their lager and uh, their IPA. The lager did not get particularly high marks among uh, the beer community, including myself. And um, but the IPA uh, came in much stronger. Uh, this is probably um, this is not high as high ranking as the IPA by other people's standards, that is, uh, but uh, higher ranking than the lager. Once again, by other by the standards of others. Of course, uh, I haven't tried this one yet, but I did find that it was pretty much in line with. Um, the opinion of most of the, brew, of the review community about the uh, IPA and lager. IPA is substantially better than the lager. And let's go ahead and give this pale ale a shot. And if you're unfamiliar with the history of pale ales, pale ale is actually a British beer style. <clears throat> and the American counterpart to it is pretty much just adding hops. Anytime that there's a British beer style and, and the Americans make their version of it, one of the first things you can almost guarantee is that the hops will increase by making it by, by by transitioning it across the pond from British to American. So anyway, there you have that. That's why American uh, pale ales are oftentimes known as hoppy pale ales. And in fact, this one is the pale ale hoppy and easy drinking, as you see there on the label once it comes into focus. So there you have it. And uh, because uh, pale ales did start out as a British uh, beer, I am using my British pint glass. Pint glass is an acceptable glass for pale ales. I'm using the British pint because, as I said, it is a transition. Now, after that quick little almost dropping this bottle, let's make sure we don't have a surplus of, uh, of foam. I'm going to set this over here where it's not as likely to. Okay, and there it comes. So let's just start pouring. The problem is I sometimes put my beers too far into... Uh, refrigerator they get very cold and then we have these uh, we have super foamy beers okay so what you are seeing is at least two shades darker than this actually is I'm going to describe this as a watered down uh, iced tea color it's sort of brassy 
and it even has a little bit of an orange tint to it, kind of a rusty color almost. Um, that head seems to be at least fairly resilient. We've got, I would say, uh, medium, I would say medium high carbonation in this. This is apparently on a carbonation which is not coming through on the camera, unfortunately. Uh, it is kind of hazy, and but not overly hazy, meaning that I can see through it, but just a, a visual of what's through it. Uh, let's give this a quick beard wipe, see what we come up with. I smell a lot of malt, actually, more than uh, hops, I smell malt. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stick my schnoz into it and see what we can come up with. Well, first off, I'm going to show you right there. I, uh, that's some great lacing, huh? I mean, isn't that really nice lacing? Kind of surprised considering it only has, uh, what was it, a, a 5.8 ABV? It's usually uh, something reserved for higher uh, alcohol content. But um, once I put my nose into this, I am starting to get the hops, but i got to admit that sweet malt is what I smell more than anything. And usually that's the case with uh, pale ales, is that, um, it's the, it, whereas IPAs, it, it's very hop forward. With American pale ales, it's a little more uh, subdued with, uh, kind of, with the malt kind of mellowing out the, the, uh, the hoppiness. All right, I don't think I should just quit yapping my flap and get to drinking. Cheers. I describe that as a, <clears throat> as a medium low mouthfeel. Um, just a little bit of spikiness. Teeny tiny little bit of alcohol burn on the end. Just a little bit. Hmm. It's okay. It's not great. It's kind of biscuity tasting, which is very typical of American Pale Lills. <clears throat> They're kind of known for their biscuity taste. Uh, but this is. This is so-so, guys. It's not, uh, I'm not getting any particular flavor. Um, I'm not, I'm not tasting the malt. I'm not tasting the, the hops. Uh, I'm tasting a, a, a mellowed uh, booziness. Low mouth feel, low flavor. Um, hmm. Not particularly impressed with this. Uh, in order to, uh, but in order to, to stress the uh, the gluten nature of this, crafted to remove gluten. Here's what they quickly say about their gluten removing: beer fermented from barley, a grain containing gluten, and crafted to remove gluten. The gluten contain content of this beer cannot be verified, and this beer may contain gluten. Every brew is tested for gluten. See your bottle results at omissiontest.com. So they are sincere about the uh, the gluten. Um, <clears throat> about removing the gluten, and as I said, this is the third of four beers that I'll be reviewing from them. <clears throat> Gotta admit, this is not uh, this is not great. Um, it's it's a pretty beer, but it really isn't. Uh, it's not coming through with much flavor. <clears throat> I'd say it's it's maybe a little better than the lager, but not as good as the IPA. And. Uh, so the next one that will be coming up is, is a light beer. We'll have to see how that goes. But um, if you like this video and you like the others that are on here, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And guys, until next time, drink good beer. And don't break the bank doing it. Cheers.